We're live. We're going to Botox and filler today. I use Dysport because it kicks in faster. It lasts longer. This is Veroniqua. She's going to a wedding in a couple days. So we're going to get a little bit of a brow lift. The brow lift we do by going above the lateral canthus, which is from here up. And you never want to go medial to the lateral canthus. So you want to stay outwards of here in that direction. If you go medial, you can drop the eyelid. Close your eyes really tight. Relax. You can see the muscle pull right there. Open your eyes so we can see the lateral canthus. And we do tiny little injections right there. How you feel? Good. Not amazing? I'm pain. Painless. Alright, so injecting about 15 units of this around the eye. Smile. Now we're in the lower part, so we're, oh, you know, she needs a little more up there. Smile. Relax. So now we're doing the muscles around the lower part, which is the crow's feet on the orbicularis. This part kicks in in about two days and it lasts probably about six months. Smile. Relax. Look up. Now we're going to hit these guys under the eye. This is called micro Botox. So we're coming underneath and just barely putting little blebs in there to relax the eyelid. If you put more than that, you can change the eye shape, which would not look good at that wedding. All right, good. Put that ice back on. On the other side, we go matchy matchy. Same thing, you can see these lines that come across in this direction. Close your eyes really tight. Relax, you can see that's the pull of the orbicularis. The orbicularis fans out like this. So you want to come and hit it up here. You stretch out the skin so you can see the veins. You always aim your needle upwards here so it doesn't happen to aim towards the levator, which is the muscle that keeps the eyelid open. We do little two-unit pushes, but it's kind of up to you how to administer. Smile. Relax. Okay. Smile. Relax. Smile. Relax. Open your eyes. Look up. Smile. Relax. Little tiny lines here. I'm right, trying to miss those little baby blood vessels. Okay. Put the eyes back over here. Alright. Now we do the forehead. Eyebrows up. So she has a low hairline here. You can't let that fool you. If you come and hit these lines over here, that's going to drop the brow. Relax. Pull up. You see, this is where you don't want to hit because that's what's pulling the brow up. So instead, we want to hit all the way across here even up into the hairline here. Lift your eyebrows, relax. So we're gonna start right over here. Eyebrows up, relax. And we're staying high because we wanna give her a brow lift and let the other Botox work better. Eyebrows up, relax. Eyebrows up, relax. And it's always better to go easy on the forehead. Eyebrows up, relax, and have someone come back rather than get their brows low. Eyebrows up, relax. Some people are super sensitive to this stuff, and even though their eyebrows don't drop, they feel that their brows are low. And you want to avoid even that, because then they're unhappy. All right, eyebrows together, relax. So this is the procerus muscle in the middle, it's a heavier muscle, so you do a larger amount of Botox, or a Dysport in this case. Eyebrows together. Relax. 
So these are the elevens or the frowning muscles. Okay, hold that there. Good. Now we go to the fillers. We're gonna fill the under eyes and the cheeks. Feeling real good. So we're using a cannula. Cannula is a blunt instrument, so it doesn't have a sharp end. So this prevents bruising. Not in everybody, but almost everybody. So first we do a little numbing injection. You can move that stuff down. Let go of that one too. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Nice. A little numbing injection there. Always got to find the hole. Wiggle it in, open your eyes. There you go. So you use two hands. You're going to put your finger right up there on top of the orbital rim. So my eyes, my finger is actually pushing into the eye. So my finger is on the rim. And the cannula is going to come up in this direction, staying deep. This is uncomfortable, but not sharply painful and I come right under my finger. So right now I'm using palpation to tell where I'm filling. I'm going to move over here. I feel a deficit. I move the cannula back. I push it back up right onto the bone. You want to stay really deep here to avoid irregularities. Get right onto the bone there. And the reason I'm coming out from this part of the cheek is so I avoid bruising and so I don't irritate the nerve that comes out right over here. Alright, so now we're going up there. Let's see. Smile. Relax. So this has a little bit of a deficit here towards the nasal fold, which is an area a lot of people miss. So first I'm going to fill the upper tear trough there very slightly. Like that. And if you look, you'll see this area fill now right there. So it's slowly bulging up. It's going to give it a little bit of a healthier appearance by the nose. And she has a deepened malar septum, so we're going to come superficial here. And come into the malar septum slightly. You have to go superficial or else you're not going to cover that cleavage plane. Okay, now we massage everything into place. Look up. So you pull the eyelid down to make sure you flatten all the irregularities and make them smooth. Look down, you pull it down, say close your eyes, you grab that part, you push it flat. Okay, open your eyes. Good. Now everything's smooth and settled. That's all the massaging with a little extra puffiness, so we just push it down, and there, it's gone. You're going to start feeling some numbness around your eye, don't be surprised. Do you feel it? Yeah. Okay. Completely normal. Now we go into the lateral cheek. The lateral cheek doesn't need a million injections, it needs one, maybe two. So if you're doing a million injections, you usually don't know what you're doing. Alright, look straight ahead. So we're going to look, what we want to do is bring up the accent right over here. Typically there's a triangle in the face of contour that comes right down onto here, it gets lighter, lighter, and then it comes back up to the nose and comes across. This is the pyramid that you want to build up. And you always want to build higher first. If you build lower first, you end up weighing down the face. Or you get those weird LA cheeks. So we want to go high. So I already filled this part to bring it up, as you can see compared to that. This is already higher. The fold here, I didn't even touch it, but you can see this side is already lighter. And it's because everything looks lifted here. So now I'm going to go right about here to, to build up on that triangle. So you touch the area. It's a flat little spot on the nail eminence. And you wiggle as you go in. And now we're filling directly in there. I'm using Perlane, which is called Restylane Lift now. And you can see I'm filling this entire area. And I can pull out a little, march it backwards to fill right up here. I can 
pull it out a little march forwards to fill the anterior chink. Right over there. Look up. She needs a little extra right there, so I'll see if I can reach over to that. Good. Okay. I'll leave a little extra here. Now you can see a little mound there. And we'll push it to right where I want it to go, which is right there. So now we have a little bit of contour coming out over there. She can use a little extra here to follow the triangle down. Actually, we'll probably try to pull away from it. So I'll do this part up here. This is an area that's often overfilled and it makes people look bulky. So be very careful with that. Last part, so shake as you go inside of her slips. Shake is done on this side. And everything right now is more puffy than it's going to be. So the next part we're going to do is down here. We're going to try to create a better jawline and get rid of some of that shadowing there. Put your eyes back over there just for a sec. And this part, we pull it up, we have to find the hole, it's right there. You pop right in, this is very important to be superficial. If you're not superficial here, you're wasting your filler. So you come up like that, you're pushing, you're bending in the cannula like that to push it up against the skin. It doesn't bruise even though there are veins there, it'd be very rare too. It can happen, but it's very rare. I want to be pushing up just against the skin. Same as you would do with uh, Sculptra. And you can see I'm injecting as I go back and forth. I'm injecting into the corner of the mouth here to bring the corner of the mouth out and it can turn a frown upside down. You okay? Yes. I'm going to fill that corner a little bit more. And if you can't get it enough with this, then you just switch to a needle, but it's going nicely. Okay, now we look at the jawline. And we're going to go just right here in front of the pre jaw sulcus. Same hole. And the pre jaw sulcus is three dimensional. So you have to and you have to fill inferiorly as well as laterally here. So that's why I go down a little bit into here and I fill that as well. Open your mouth. Close. And now you massage it to smooth it out. That's how you do it all the way down to here. And then when you want to massage the pregial sulcus, you have to pull it up onto the face and massage it like that. And smooth it out. Okay, so you can see here there's an indent on this side, whereas this side is a smoother jawline. Okay, you can see the indent here, and this side is a smoother jawline. This is pushed out, this is indented in slightly. And if you look at the cheek now, you can see that this part of the cheek is flattened. We haven't treated it yet. This part is flattened. This part looks fuller and healthier and comes up there, yet she's not looking cheeky or volumized, everything is just looking lifted. So now we'll go over and do this side to match it. Thank you. 
usually have to lower this side because I'm right-handed. And I lean over onto the chair, I say head towards me a little bit. Thank you. Do a tiny little injection here towards the, I'd say right lower quadrant. Okay, chin up a little bit. So this whole thing would be considered a liquid facelift. So again, we come in from here, I'm going to feel the under eye where the, usually the biggest deficit that you feel is right in the middle here, which is right at the mid midline of the, uh, the mid pupillary line. So you put your finger on there, you go onto the rim, and you come and get the cannula here just under your finger. So the pressure right now is under the ball of my finger, and I can feel it filling. And you can see it filling right here. Now I'm going to march over. I go over there. Now I'm going to start filling it again, just like that. You can see that part coming out, and this is deep, so you're not going to have any complications. Now, since I'm right-handed, I say head towards me, and I come out a little bit. I'm going to put my finger over here, and I'm going to come upwards. There you go. All right, and we're going to keep marching over to fill up on the entire anterior orbital rim, because you have to have it come up to the cheek. The cheek is a three-dimensional structure. The anterior part is the orbital rim. The lateral part is the zygoma. Everybody thinks the cheek is just the side. It's all of it. And so you typically want to fill all of it together. Or else you look like you have one part projected and not the others. It doesn't look great. So I'm going to come up all the way here, up near the lateral canthus, which is the lateral corner of the eye. I'm filling it all the way up in that corner right there. I like to keep my finger on it just so I know exactly where I am and to make sure that the filler doesn't migrate. Okay, so I finished around the eye. Now I'm going to pull back out and go back this direction towards the nasal fold. And because we're using a cannula, there should be no sharp pains. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. That's right. It's <laughs> so a little massage. In general, you want to pull down with your finger and then massage upwards towards the eye because you don't want the filler to go inferiorly. That's how you get those teeth are bad. Mm -hmm. So we avoid that by keeping everything up high, and that's why my massages roll upwards. Nasal fold is good. Now we're going to do the lateral cheek just like we did on the other side. Go matchy matchy. Now you see the contour is right there. The matching is going to be right here. So I keep my finger on it, come across. Now I pinch, I shake, I get down all the way to the bone, to the malar eminence right there, and I'm pushing. Now keep in mind when you hit the bone, this needle gets dull. So you're not going to want to keep piercing the skin with it if you can avoid it. You see everything filling over here now. I'm going to go in that direction towards the anterior cheek, give it some anterior projection. Because people just look at a photo and they think that the photo is all that matters. It's not in real life. you got to look good three-dimensionally, not just from the front. Okay, so we've done all that. And you want to mold it in slightly here. You don't want to push too much because you're super periosteal. And that means that if you push too much, it can migrate. And then you just lost all your stuff. Look up. So you got a nice contour there, look towards me a little bit. Still can use a little more right up there, so you do a little squeeze. And you just dump it in. So that's it. That's that part. Now we're going to finish up with the jawline here.
And Tony's here from Montreal videotaping. Tony's single, in case anybody's wondering. And he works out. Probably gonna stop looking at him like that. <laughs> Reach out. So I gotta get all the way up into that corner. There you go, all the way up there. Now she has a little bit of an overhang here, which I don't think I'm going to be able to get with the cannula. So once I get down to about 0.2 cc's, I'm going to pull out. So that's about 0.2 cc's left now. Open your mouth. Close. A little massage. Just like being at your favorite spa. I know where. <laughs> okay, so that's already better. Now I'm going to switch to a needle, 30 gauge. With fillers, unless you're going on the bone, you want to use a 30 gauge needle. If you don't use a 30 gauge needle, it can leave those little balls because these things inject as beads. So we already turned this up a little bit. Now we're going to go for a little bit more. So you stretch it out. You always want to stay on the lower side. Okay, so veer this way as opposed to that way. If you go that way, you're going to end up making it worse. Sometimes you have to actually inject the lip to get this to come out a little bit. Now you can see we're injecting very superficially. There's a little indent there from her prior stripper days when she had a uh, <laughs> lip piercing. Okay. So pull that little thing out too. Get it over your mouth. Close. And now you can see it looks like it's pointing upwards. It's a little exaggerated because we just did it, but you can see now it points upwards instead of downwards. Okay, and that whole exaggerated part goes away, but at least it doesn't look like a frown. On this side will finish up the same thing. Tiny little bit right there. There are lots of blood vessels here, so you want to make sure. Try not to bruise. Okay, close. Right, now we're just gonna do one more vial for shits and giggles, making it even six. <laughs> Why not, right? I like to make a mess. Mm -hmm. Can you tell? <laughs> no, <It's> super clean. <laughs> All right. So the thing that stands out to me is we didn't finish this part, which is planned. So we're going to have to come right along here, we grab the skin, get right under the skin here, and we come forward and fill right here. Now you can see it migrating in the wrong direction, so we stop and we move forward to where we want it to go. Just like that, so I just dumped half a vial in that one little area. Now we got to massage it around to make it smooth, so if you lift it up, you'll see it's all here. Because again, the pre jaw is a three-dimensional area. This cheek was up here, as it comes down, it droops inferiorly and it has that anterior droop that follows along here. So to fill it, you have to fill three dimension or two dimensionally, one in this dimension and one inferiorly. So that's all the filler. Now we massage into place against the jaw. You do a couple pushes and you'll feel the thing kind of squirt under your fingers. Just want to make sure it's smooth. And now you can see that's a smoother jawline already. And if you're looking at the entire jawline, the entire thing looks better. Even though there's a deficiency back here, the whole thing looks better already. So you always want to start on the jaw from front to back. If you start on the back, on the angle, and try to get rid of the, the jowl by filling behind it, you're going to use three fillers just to get that area. It's not very high yield. So if you're trying to save people money, which you always are because fillers are temporary, you want to start anteriorly first. Just like on the face, you start high and you go low. On the jaw, you start anterior and then you go back. Turn towards me. It's okay over there. Okay, so you can already see the nasal folds. They're much better than they were when we started. And that's we didn't even touch them. It's better because we filled above them, and that draws light away from it. Still, we're going to go into the little triangle in the corner and give a slight bit of softening over there. The reason you don't want to start with these is because we don't want to look like a monkey. And when you end up filling these folds without filling the top first, you weigh down the face and you get rid of that fold, that definition between the lip and the cheek. And people look like monkeys.
Okay, and the nasal triangle, you just push it. You don't have to put your finger in the mouth. And that's it. And then we show Veronica her result, and then she gives us like a really fake. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, now I can see a big difference now. Probably oh, the need. Bad. Oh, Ma mama got what she need? Yeah, mama got what she need. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this stuff's all immediate, kicks in right away. It's a little puffier than it's going to be, so it all calms down. But the whole face looks lifted, there's more accent under the eyes, the eyes look more open. When the this part kicks in, she's going to have smoother skin up top up here. She's not going to have the furrows in here and the brow of it. And these little lines here are going to relax because we ended up doing it under there. And that's it. Thank you to the best doctor in the whole wide world. Endorse me. <laughs> <laughs> Approved. Approved, right? <laughs>